Today on Brubacuin, we're going to be doing another fermented hot sauce. We're going to be doing pineapple cayenne. Sounds like a match made in heaven to me, right? So let's get to it. So again, local farmer, Jared's Real Foods, been hooking it up. We've got these awesome cayenne peppers. We've got about three pounds here that we're gonna be throwing in a one gallon jar. And uh, with the pineapple, little onion, let it ferment, hopefully for like two months. Results should be amazing, so let's get to it. Okay, so for this recipe, we're gonna be using about half a pineapple here. I'm just gonna cut the top off. And we'll just cut it right in half. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to cut it into about one inch. Uh, I don't know, medallions, something like that. So that left us about four. So that's going to be about perfect. Next, we've got these beautiful cayennes here. And like I said, we got about three pounds of these and we're going to need to take the stems off of these and cut them up. So this is going to take a little bit of time because they're so small. Uh, but all, all we really need to do is cut them, I don't know, in about one inch pieces. You just want to make sure that the brine can get into all the little nooks and crannies of these things. Uh, the last thing you want is for the brine not to be able to get in there. They can rot from the inside out. So it's really important that we do this here. So we're going to basically kind of layer this. We're going to do a bunch of cayennes on the bottom, put a piece of uh, pineapple, a little bit of the onion and then just kind of do the same thing kind of keep layering it up they'll just kind of heat help keep some of these cayennes under the water because they tend to float up so <laughs> eight minutes later we got enough for, i think for this first layer so uh let's talk about jar the jar here really quick we got a one gallon jar here uh the brine is what the salt water brine is what's basically gonna uh keep bacteria from growing in this so as long as you wash this with really hot water keep it clean you're fine I personally, just as an added step, because I have it on hand, I use Star Sand, which is a, a sanitizer for brewing. Uh, I just spray it in, let it kind of dry, should be good to go. But like I said, it's not really necessary. So we got our one gallon jar here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna layer in all these cayennes that we did. We did probably about a third of them. Cayennes are in. We're gonna throw a couple of these pineapples in here. I'm gonna throw one of these pineapples in anyway. Well, let's do two of these in the bottom here. And then we got that onion. We're just gonna do the same thing with the onion, cut it in about, you know, that big a chunk, about half an inch thick. And a layer of that will go in. So that is what we're looking like. We got the cayennes, the pineapple, the onion. It's gonna be incredible. Now. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably gonna take about 20 or so minutes just to get through cutting all the stems and dicing these cayennes. If you don't have that kind of time, you can always throw them in a blender and just kind of pulse it and rough chop it. This is just the fun of cooking for me. I like getting my hands dirty, I like getting the knives going. And uh, so let me get this thing filled up and we'll get to the brine. Okay, here we go. Like I said, 20 minutes later, uh, we're on our last layer. I've got one more onion that I just chunked into giant like medallions here. And we're gonna pack these in Actually, first, we're gonna throw that one last piece of pineapple here in. And then we're gonna pack these onions just around that. Just kind of squish everything down. And what that layer right there is gonna do, you can kind of see here, we got fully packed with the onion and the pineapple. What that's gonna do is just kind of help the, uh, the cayennes not float to the top. They kind of have a tendency to, to want to get there. And like I said, you need to keep everything under the liquid here. So onto the brine. For the brine, I found that 3000 milliliters pretty much fills up a one gallon jar with when you have all the stuff that's in it. Uh, so for that, we're gonna use 105 milliliters. 
My CL says milliliters. I don't know if it's milligram. I, I never use metric systems. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. 120, 105 milliliters according to my little scale. So that's what goes in. It's basically a three and a half percent salt to water ratio. So if you have a thousand milliliters, it's a, you know, 35 milliliter. I don't know. So anyway, that's going in. And the salt ratio is important. So you do want to measure that out with the scale just to make sure, because this is what is preventing from any bacteria growing on your stuff. I always like to use just coarse uh, kosher sea salt. I feel like the coarse stuff just kind of, I don't know, breaks down a little easier, but it, and it also has the, believe it or not, different salts have different salinity values. Pink Himalayan salt is way less salty than kosher salt. So I always use the same salt. That way I just know what I'm working with. Give this a nice stir. As always, I get to use my cool toys from brewing. So I've got my 3000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask here. And this just kind of works out nice because it helps you stir it all together and yeah, nice and cloudy. This will clear up and that's when we want to add it in. We want to make sure that all that salt is dissolved into this liquid. Salt water's ready. Like I said, three and a half percent salt to water. Uh, you can use filtered water. I haven't noticed any difference out of the tap versus filtered. I've done both. So I, I just go out of the tap. Uh, but this goes over the top here. You can kind of see there's all these little bubbles coming out and that's just all the air escaping from all the little nooks and crannies and that's really what you want because air is your enemy in this. So try and give it a little shake, get as much of that air as possible out. Okay, so I think that is good. We have our cayennes, we have our pineapple, white onions going in there. Uh, the last little thing, like I said, I like to sanitize everything before it goes in. So I've got a little star sand here that we're just gonna spray this little puck. And it's just a little uh, wait for weighing down stuff for jarring and stuff like that and just kind of shove everything in make sure everything gets under that water level and that's one last little added protection we've got our lid here so we'll do the same thing we're just going to spray this and like I said everything's been cleaned really well but this is just an extra layer actually we're a little short on liquid here now that I compress that so we're going to fill this up Perfect. And then the lid goes on. And then last but not least, we have our airlock, which basically allows the fermentation process of this is gonna create carbon dioxide. You want that to escape, otherwise things explode. Uh, this will allow carbon dioxide out, nothing in. So we take the cap off of this. And I always just fill it with some of the star sand out of the bottle here. That way it just kind of helps also protect anything coming back. Put a little halfway like that. It looks perfect. This goes on. Cap goes on. And guys, we're done with this one. We'll see you in about a month, maybe two months. One thing I recommend, putting a piece of tape on it with the date you made it, maybe what's in it. That way you just remember, you know, uh, one other tip, put it in like a little bucket or a, a plate or something. This will, I don't care how much you have, it will overflow a little bit, could make a little bit of a mess. Just adds up. So we'll put this thing away and we'll see you guys in a month. Cheers. Okay, here we go. It's been seven weeks. This is the uh, cayenne pineapple. It looks amazing. Let's bust into this thing, see how it turned out. First off, the smell off that brine just is so incredible. Uh, let's get this brine poured off here. All right, so now that we got the brine poured off, we need to check out the uh, the pH on this. So anything under 4.6 is good. That'll help, uh, that means it's shelf stable. So, okay, we are right at 4.2. Uh, perfect, shelf stable. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the uh, all the peppers and pineapple into the blender. We're gonna blend it. We're gonna add the brine back in a cup at a time just until we can get that consistency that we want. And uh, give this thing a try. There we go. All these are going in. Hopefully everything will fit. All right, we got most of it in. 
blend it down a little bit. Actually, we'll add a cup of that brine right now. Just to kind of help blend. should be able to fit the rest of this in now. If you don't have quite this big a blender, you can always do it in multiple batches. And this is honestly pushing the limits of this blender, so fingers crossed. The cool thing about this Vitamix blender is it'll, it'll blend everything, including the seeds and everything else like that. If you don't have one of these, you're going to need to put it through a sieve if, if you want it that nice, you know, thin hot sauce consistency. If you want it thick and chunky, that's also fine as well. So uh, I think I'm going to need to do this in a couple little batches here. So let's separate this out. Okay, so now that we got this mostly blended up, we're going to add a half cup of rice wine vinegar is going to go in. And that's just going to bring a little bit more acidity to it, a little bit more brightness. It doesn't take a whole lot. All right, so now at this point, I feel like one more cup of the brine needs to go in. Just kind of help thin it out a little bit, a little bit more here. Okay, everything's blended perfectly. Everything's nice and smooth. Got the consistency that we wanted. We've got about, um, I don't know, about two and a half cups of the brine in here. And uh, let's give this thing a taste. You get the, the definite, you know, cayenne hot sauce, but you get like a sweetness from that pineapple in the back. So good. So uh, next step, all we got to do left, add some xanthan gum to this and then pasteurize it. So we're going to do about two teaspoons of the xanthan gum. And this just basically helps it not separate with the, you know, the liquid with the vinegar and everything else in there. So we'll go about two teaspoons and we'll just blend this again to make sure everything gets nice and incorporated. And that just thickened it up a little bit. Uh, it, like I said, it's gonna mainly there to, to help stop the separation. So next step, we need to pasteurize this, get it up to 165 degrees. It's gonna kill any microbes that might be in there. And uh, the cool thing about the Vitamix, we can do it straight in here. It's got a little soup setting that basically brings it up to temperature and uh, it should take about 10 minutes. So we'll see you guys when this is done. We just hit 168 degrees, perfect. Uh, obviously, if you don't have a blender that can do this, throw it in the stove, just bring it up to 165, you're good to go. Uh, we are now ready to put it in the bottles. So get these little bottles off Amazon, they have a little squirt cap, uh, super simple. I star sand these, I ran them, rinse them through hot water and then uh, just flush some star sand in it, which is like a sanitizer, uh, you know, just because I can. Probably don't need the star sand, it's just I like the extra step of, of sanitization. And then we just go straight into the bottle with these. A little funnel here. All right, so because this is you know still really hot, it will condense in the bottle here. So you wanna fill it up as high as you can. And um, that's it. The squirt cap goes on. Cap. We've got cayenne, pineapple, hot sauce. This stuff is amazing. I'm gonna give one last little taste here. That is so good. You can almost eat that just as a soup. Um, guys, we're Home Brew and Barbecue HQ. Please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.